Well, the time is finally here. We have our seed collection released over at clearwatervalleyfarms.com. The seeds are out. So many great seeds. Some seeds you're not going to find anywhere else. Stay tuned to the end of the video. We're going to talk about some of those and also give some planting advice tips on some of these things as well because I know some of these you're going to want to get amazing seeds. Uh, Clearwater Valley Farms, it is available now. Uh, real quick, I want to read first in this video a comment sent in by a viewer um, I thought was really good. And it actually kind of goes into some things we can talk about here uh, when it comes to chickens. <laughs> Everyone, the, the big news lately is chickens. You can't get eggs, chickens are dying, and, and f barn fires, and, you know, Governments are out there saying, don't raise chickens, and it's insanity, insanity. But here, here's the comment. This comment sent in by Cousin Clive. This was in response to our See Our Chicken Coop video. We have a video where, hey, I take you on a small tour of our chicken coop, and um, and got a lot of feedback on that, a lot of views. Uh, the comment starts off like this. Interesting that you mentioned pest and insect control. My very rural HOA does not allow chickens. Now, full stop. If you have... If you live in a very rural area and you have an HOA, <laughs> I don't see how those two get, I don't see how that works. Um, but you need to move out more rural. That you, I don't think that word rural means what you think it means. <laughs> so just, if you, whatever, maybe you do. Maybe there are very rural places that have HOAs. But anyway, continuing on. I knew this when purchasing. However, my neighbor had a small flock of free range chickens and all was well with them patrolling our property. I also suffer from chronic babesiosis, a tick-borne infection, so having chickens around to eat ticks was a win. Then our neighbors culled their flock for food and stopped raising chickens. I bet they're regretting that now. Our tick population exploded because of the rodents that came back as a result of the absence. And if you did not know, ladies and gentlemen, chickens will eat mice. If, they, if, if a mice runs across their path, they will try to chase it down. And chances are the chicken will get it. Chickens are almost as good a mousers as cats. And those of you who have chickens and have had chickens for a while, you know this to be true. I've never seen a chicken catch a rat yet, but, you know, I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, chickens are like tiny raptors. <laughs> like out of Jurassic Park, you know. And I don't believe in the whole dinosaur-chicken-bird connection. That's a whole other topic and video and channel, by the way. Anyway, my point being is that, yes, chickens are very good mousers. I plan to raise chickens starting this year. I also plan to use pest control as a defense if the HOA idiots ever give me trouble for raising and keeping them. Our property is five wooded acres on a dead-end road with three houses and one yurt. If I fail to defend my position, assuming an issue arises, I'm purchasing as many damn guinea hens as I can to release in the populated portion of our HOA on Fridays when all of them come home from the city to their vacation homes. <laughs> that is hilarious. Um, yes, um, guinea hens, if you don't know, are very loud and obnoxious creatures. <laughs> Just, I'm just imagining the idea of all these people coming to their vacation homes and <laughs> guineas being everywhere and making the noise that they do. Hold on, hold on. I can't compose myself. That that would be absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. I think you should. I th Listen, you live in an HOA. They deserve this sort of punishment anyway. And if you do live in an HOA, you need to do this also. Go find a bunch of guinea hens. You can find them on Craigslist. I don't think you can find them on Facebook Marketplace because there's probably all kinds of rules against that sort of thing. But if you can find guinea hens, if, especially if they're already old, you know mature, but if you can get some guinea hens and some chicks and raise them up and then release them in your HOA, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I can't just stop laughing. Uh, it's, it serves people like them right. Anyway, um, but yes... Uh, that sounds like fantastic. Listen, I know a lot of people right now are, I have heard a lot of rumors on, on different places where people who live in HOAs and are now approaching their HOAs or their city councils right now, because right now is a time to get on it and pressure them to, Hey, let me have a few hens. Let me have a couple chickens so I can have eggs. And really what you ought to be doing is, you know, saying, Hey, listen, I can have the rooster. Everyone says, Oh, we don't want the rooster because it's loud. Really? They actually, the hens are 
pretty much just as loud as a rooster. If you ever heard a, a, a in fact, Doug, Doug over at Off Grid with Doug and Stacy made the point the other day about um, hens laying eggs. They are noisy. It, you know, it's not, it's not like a woman crying in childbirth, but it's, you know, close. Anyway, now is the time because the pressure is on them to say yes, because food is expensive. Inflation's not going down. Prices are going to continue to go up and eggs are really, you know, high right now. And, and if you and a bunch of neighbors, you know, get your torches and pitchforks and show up at your city council or your HOA meeting and say, Hey, listen, here's the deal, folks. Pass this ordinance or pass this rule that we are allowed chickens or else speaking of or else we're talking about Clearwater Valley Farms and or else company we'll get to that in a second now's the time to do it now right now is a time I know um, a lot of you guys have said left comments about this issue in the recent past and now is the time to do it all right guys um We'll talk more about chickens. There's lots of other chicken news I could have. I was looking through all the articles today. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many stuff, so many things I could talk about when it comes to chickens. The gov- We talked about New Zealand the other day and all those chickens dying in that big barn fire. New Zealand is coming out officially, you know, and telling the people, don't rush to chickens. We don't want you raising chickens. <laughs> the governments all around the earth are doing like whatever they can to keep people, at least on the Western side, to keep people from raising their own food. They don't like you being independent. All right, let's get into the seed packet. ClearwaterValleyFarms.com. Folks, I like this company. It's an or else company. Why? Because if a certain employer came to you and said, hey, you have to get the clot shot or else, you'd be like, else. I don't buy from seed companies, certain seed companies in the Ozarks that profess to sell non-GMO seeds, but yet are okay with becoming a GMO themselves. There's a certain seed company in the Ozarks, folks, that mm, they, the owner believes in the clot shot. I'm going to keep harping on this until they're gone. And I'm already getting frustrated by the amount of homestead videos I'm seeing out there on YouTube land by homesteading channels who are getting their spring gardens started and they're using clot shot seed company <laughs> seeds. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Stop supporting people who support the clot shot. Okay. Okay. ClearwaterValleySeeds.com. There's so many great seeds in here. And some of my favorites you're not going to be able to find anywhere. Um, This seed packet is kind of expensive. But you're getting a ton of seeds. Okay? A ton of seeds. Everything you could possibly want for spring and then some that you could save for the apocalypse. It's a good investment. They also have their seed vault. Here it is. Okay. It's the Clearwater Valley Farm Seed Vault. You can get this. Um, It's got so many seeds in there. Again, a great investment. For the apocalypse, buy this, put it in your freezer or something, and, and just save it for that day you might need it. But, man, it's so many seeds chucked in this thing. But let's talk more about our seed packet. Some of the seeds in here you're not going to find anywhere else are this one. This is my favorite. Orange, uh, Rock's Orange Sorghum. Uh, this is a fantastic, absolutely fantastic seed. Um, and, and a lot of people don't know that sorghum is way more nutritionally dense than honey. Everyone in the homestead community wants to be, they want to have honeybees. Sorghum produces a sugar product, and it's way more nutrient-dense, and it's not even close to honey. Not even close. If I was going to choose, and not only that, but you got you to buy, you gotta buy some, some equipment to, to crush the sorghum and all that stuff, but it provides so much more. you got to buy equipment for bee stuff anyway. So if you're going to buy bee stuff to make sugar, might as well make sorghum and buy the equipment for that. You're getting so much more. The stalks and everything, you can feed that to your livestock after it's crushed. The seeds can be used to feed your chickens. Just take the tops of those seed tops right there and, you know, save them up, put them in a trash can or whatever and save them up over over the winter. And then every once in a while, just take a couple out and toss them into your chicken coop. And the chickens have a heyday. You can make flour with this. I even did a video not that long, uh, a couple years ago, where we made popcorn out of the sorghum. The sorghum seeds will pop like popcorn. Now it's small popcorn, but it's popcorn. So many things you can do with this. And the rocks... Orange sorghum is like one of the sweeter varieties, so you're getting a lot of sugar out of these things. And you won't find them over at some, you know, other companies. Um, the Achacha. This is one of our biggest sellers. We used to sell on the Homestead Web Store. Um, I haven't sold any in the last couple of years because my life's kind of upside down. But anyway, this 
won me awards at our county fair and it is an amazing producer and uh, i love they, they they kind of split open when you when you kind of open them up you open up these these pods and there's seeds inside you throw the seeds away or you save them and then you take these little uh, remainders these shells they're kind of like dippers in the shape of like a corn chip and you can dip them in like ranch dressing oh delicious absolutely fantastic i love these things they have like little spikes all over them but the spikes are really soft so they don't hurt you but these are fantastic. I love these. You're, you won't find these almost anywhere on the internet. Good luck. Good luck. That certain company does definitely doesn't have deals. And then you have Shishito peppers. These are pretty common, but they're one of my favorites. They, you know, Clearwater Valley asked me, say, hey, what kind of seeds would you want in a packet tailored to you? I'm like, okay. So I went through. I'm like, there's some things I just want to have. The Shishito pepper is one of those peppers because it's such a heavy producer. I love that pepper. Uh, of course, you got to have the Arkansas Traveler tomato. Pretty common one. I love turnips, although they do have over at Clearwater Valley Farms the um, the Japanese turnip. I forgot what it's called, the shorgum or whatever it's called, but it's the Japanese turnip. It's a pure white, all white turnip. That's my favorite turnip. I bring the turnips in and I just eat them raw, slice them up, eat them raw. Here's another thing you won't find anywhere. Popolo. Popolo. Mm. Listen, you know, you know your cilantro bolts. You hate it because by the time midsummer arrives and you're making salsa, there's no cilantro. You can't find cilantro. You gotta go buy this. You grew everything in your garden and now you gotta go buy your cilantro at the store. If you grow popolo, this stuff grows about five feet tall and it grows all summer long and it tastes like cilantro. I know for a fact because I love cilantro. My father-in-law hates cilantro and he hates popolo because it tastes, it tastes the same as cilantro. <laughs> so, popolo. You want popolo. If you like cilantro, you got to get this in your collection. The only way you're going to get it is by getting the American Homestead Seed Collection. And you're not going to find that anywhere else either. Okay. Also, one of my favorites too, I love mammoth sunflowers. And they threw in this one too, a mammoth gray striped sunflower. It's one of the most beautiful of all sunflowers and it's a mammoth variety. Um, I love sunflowers. They, made, they just make the garden look pretty. I have some videos where we harvested our sunflowers and we roasted the seeds and we packed them. It works great. I have a video on that. It's one of my more popular videos. But um, even if you don't harvest the seeds and you just throw the seeds to your chickens, again, more chicken feed, um, they just look pretty. They make a homestead look pretty. So there is the Clearwater Valley Farms, Homestead, and American Homestead Seed Collection. Get it now. Uh, there's only, I think, 100 packets available, so get it now. Run over there and get it. I think they're going to they're gonna try to make some more, but some of these seeds are hard to source. So um, they got what they could get, and, you know, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to... Uh, the Popolo, which is probably going to be one of the most favorites out there. You want to make sure you keep the ground moist when you're doing this. You're going to need about... 10 days or so of just keeping that ground moist until that those those first sprouts pop up. Uh, so make sure you um, you do that. Other than that, uh, give your uh, achicha cucumbers something to climb on. They love like if you I built an arbor in my garden to to let these climb on it. So if you want to um if you give you can build something, a trellis or some sort of thing, it's going to want to climb on something. So all right, leave any comments below, questions below that you might have. And also thanks to uh, Cly uh, Cousin Clive for sending in his comment. If you want to, if you have a question, I'm going to do more questions. I'm getting a lot of questions from people on email. If you have a question, you can send it in at AmericanHomestead.com on our contact page, and I'll try to do a video on it if it strikes my fancy. So, all right. We will leave it at that. Check out our merchandise, teespring.com. Our Violates Community Standards is available there. One of our best sellers. Uh, people like it, but our Entire, our best seller by far is the stupid you'd hurt shirt because if we had more hurt in this world, there'd be an awful lot less stupid. You can buy that shirt. Uh, links below at our Teespring store right there. All right, guys. See you next time in the Homestead. Oh, share this video. Share this video. Share it right now. Share it. Bye. This is Grandma. Grandma survived the Great Depression. She survived the Great Depression because her supply chain was local and she knew how to do stuff. Grandma was smart. Grandma told us to make do with what you got. She also said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Homesteading is all about self-reliance and declaring ourselves to be independent from the system. We grow our own food, we raise our own animals, and doing these things helps safeguard our families from the unpredictable world that surrounds us. But what about banking? 
I love being my own power company, but what about being my own bank? Right now, our country is over $30 trillion in debt and rising. The Fed keeps printing money and the Congress won't stop spending money. Staying attached to the modern banking system and their investment vehicles is like putting all of your eggs in one very, very fragile basket. On one side, you have the threat of inflation and your savings value floating away. And the other side is a possible deflationary stock market collapse, just like what happened in the 1930s. Genesis Gold Group is like a basket holding eggs, and these eggs are impossible to break. History shows us that all paper investments have and will return to their intrinsic value eventually. Zero. But gold, silver, and other precious metals have never, ever been worthless. In every collapse throughout history, people have turned back to precious metals to find monetary value. If you have a 401k, an IRA, or a savings account where you're literally watching the purchasing power inflate away, give Genesis Gold Group a call right now, today, this instant. They can develop a strategy for you in the days ahead. I can tell you how I raise sheep, I can tell you how I raise chickens, or the best way to grow tomatoes, or how to hook up a solar panel. But Genesis Gold Group is your best shot at safeguarding your hard-earned savings and investments during this increasingly turbulent time in history. The link and phone number is in the description below or visit their website at genesisgoldgroup.com. And be sure to say you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>